Hey there, Ruth Haven Grounds family. So, you know I'm always experimenting with different ways to improve our soil and attract beneficial creatures to the garden, but what happened last week absolutely blew my mind. I had some old bread sitting in a bucket of water for about five days, creating this murky, fermented concoction that honestly looked pretty disgusting. On a whim, I decided to pour it around my tomato plants, and within 48 hours, my garden soil was absolutely teeming with earthworms. I'm talking thousands of them surfacing, aerating, and transforming the soil right before my eyes. Now, before you think I've lost it with my kitchen scraps, let me break down exactly what happened, why it worked, and how you can replicate this incredible natural phenomenon in your own garden. This isn't just some random fluke. There's actual science behind why rotting breadwater creates an earthworm paradise, and I'm going to share everything I've learned through this accidental discovery. When bread sits in water for several days, it undergoes anaerobic fermentation. The starches in the bread break down into simpler sugars and organic acids, while the yeast and bacteria present create a nutrient-rich liquid that's essentially a microbial feast. This fermented mixture contains beneficial microorganisms, organic compounds, and dissolved nutrients that earthworms find absolutely irresistible. Here's what really fascinated me about this process. The fermentation creates lactic acid bacteria, similar to what you'd find in kombucha or sauerkraut. These beneficial bacteria don't just attract worms, they actually improve soil health by breaking down organic matter and making nutrients more available to plant roots. When I poured that breadwater into my garden, I wasn't just adding a worm attractant, I was inoculating my soil with an entire ecosystem of beneficial microbes. The smell, while not particularly pleasant to us, acts like a dinner bell for earthworms. They can sense the presence of decomposing organic matter from surprisingly far away, and they'll travel through the soil to reach it. What I observed was earthworms coming up from deeper soil layers and migrating from adjacent areas, all drawn to this concentrated source of food and beneficial bacteria. Within two days of applying the breadwater, I noticed the soil surface was covered with worm castings, those little nutrient-rich pellets that earthworms leave behind. By day three, I could literally see worms at the soil surface, especially in the early morning and evening hours. This wasn't because I had suddenly created thousands of new worms overnight. Rather, I had created conditions that made existing worm populations more active and visible. Earthworms spend most of their time deep in the soil, but they'll come to the surface when there's abundant food and moisture. The breadwater provided both. The liquid penetrated several inches into the soil, creating a moist, nutrient-rich zone that worms couldn't resist. Additionally, the fermented bread particles themselves became food sources, encouraging worms to remain in the upper soil layers where they could process this organic matter. What really struck me was the diversity of worms that appeared. I saw the common night crawlers we're all familiar with, but also smaller red wigglers and various other species. Each type plays a slightly different role in soil health, with some focusing on surface composting while others work deeper layers. By attracting this diversity, the breadwater essentially activated my soil's entire worm workforce. Now, three weeks after my initial application, the improvements to my soil structure are remarkable. The areas where I applied the breadwater have noticeably better drainage, even though we've had several heavy rains. This is because earthworms create vertical tunnels as they move through the soil, allowing water to penetrate deeper rather than running off or pooling at the surface. The soil texture itself has changed dramatically. What was previously somewhat compacted clay has become a loose, crumbly medium that my hands sink into easily. This is the magic of worm castings. They're not just fertilizer, they're soil conditioners. Each casting contains beneficial bacteria, partially digested organic matter and minerals in forms that plants can readily absorb. My tomato plants in the treated area are showing darker green foliage and more vigorous growth compared to control plants in untreated sections. I've also noticed a significant increase in overall soil life, where there are earthworms, there are also beneficial nematodes, springtails, and other microscopic organisms that contribute to soil health. It's like the breadwater kickstarted an entire underground ecosystem that continues to develop and strengthen. After seeing these results, I've refined my technique and now make breadwater regularly. Here's my current process, which has given me consistent results across different garden beds. Take any bread, 
Stale bread works perfectly, and this is a great way to use up those end pieces nobody wants to eat. I use about two to three slices per gallon of water. Break the bread into chunks and place it in a bucket or container. Add unchlorinated water if possible, as chlorine can kill beneficial microorganisms. If you only have tap water, let it sit out for 24 hours to allow the chlorine to evaporate. Cover the container loosely. You want some air exchange, but you don't want pests getting in. Then wait 5 to 7 days, stirring occasionally. You'll know it's ready when it has a sour, fermented smell and the bread has mostly dissolved into a murky liquid. The ratio I've found most effective is 1 gallon of bread water per 10 square feet of garden bed. Apply it in the early morning or evening when soil temperatures are cooler and earthworms are naturally more active. Pour it directly onto the soil around your plants, avoiding direct contact with plant stems or leaves. The effect should be visible within 48 to 72 hours. While I'm enthusiastic about this technique, I need to share some important caveats. First, don't overdo it. Applying bread water more than once every three to four weeks can create anaerobic conditions in your soil which can actually harm plant roots and beneficial organisms. The goal is to attract and feed worms, not to saturate your soil with fermenting organic matter. Second, be aware of potential pest issues. The fermented smell can attract raccoons, possums, and other animals. I've started applying it in the morning and lightly working it into the top inch of soil to minimize odors. If you have persistent problems with garden pests, you might want to skip this technique or apply it more strategically in enclosed or protected areas. Third, this works best in soils that already have some earthworm population. If your soil is heavily compacted, extremely dry or chemically contaminated, you might not see the same dramatic results. In those cases, consider this technique as part of a broader soil improvement strategy that includes adding compost and reducing pesticide use. What excites me most about this discovery isn't just the immediate worm population increase. It's the long-term soil building that results. Healthy earthworm populations create a self-sustaining cycle of soil improvement. They process organic matter, create tunnels for air and water movement, and deposit nutrient-rich castings throughout your root zone. Their activity also helps incorporate organic matter deeper into the soil profile, building topsoil thickness over time. I'm now viewing my garden not just as a place where I grow plants, but as an ecosystem where I'm cultivating soil life. The earthworms are doing work that would cost thousands of dollars if I tried to replicate it mechanically. Aerating, fertilizing, and conditioning every cubic inch of soil in my garden beds, and they're doing it for free, powered by kitchen scraps and some stale bread. The best part? This technique costs essentially nothing and uses materials you'd otherwise throw away. It's regenerative gardening at its simplest and most accessible. Whether you're managing a small urban container garden or a sprawling homestead, you can apply these principles and watch your soil come alive. So, there you have it, my fellow Ruth Haven Grounds gardeners, the surprisingly powerful technique of using fermented breadwater to supercharge your earthworm populations and transform your soil. I'll be continuing to experiment with different variations and applications, and I'd love to hear about your experiences if you try this technique in your own gardens. If you found this information valuable, please subscribe to Ruth Haven Grounds for more soil building strategies, organic gardening experiments and real world techniques that actually work. Share this article with your gardening friends who are working to build healthier, more productive soil. Together, we're growing more than just plants. We're cultivating living soil that will feed us for generations to come. Happy gardening, and may your soil always be teeming with life.